check one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Inside Andy Ozanov Court here on a championship Sunday. It's a GNAC championship game on ECTV as the top-seeded Emmanuel College Saints play host to the third-seeded Monks of St. Joe's College from Maine. This is Matt LePan, Alex Chips, live with you again on championship Sunday as the Saints look to three-peat here in the GNAC. And they will take on the same opponent they've taken on the last two times they've won the title, and that is the Monks of St. Joe's. Third year in a row that the Saints will play host to the Monks for the GNAC title. Well, it's been a long ride to get here, but the Saints come in at 24-1 and one overall, riding a team record 20-game winning streak. It matches the best record ever for the Saints, matching the 2004 Final Four team and the 2006 team that won a GNAC title here, and I welcome in Alex Ships. Alex, we mentioned it before the Norwich game, or you mentioned it before the Norwich game on Wednesday night. This team has a chance to cement themselves in history. This group of upperclassmen, Corey Mathis, Lordon D'Agostino, Riley Lehiff, and Jamad Finn, they have a chance to put themselves up there in the pantheon of great Saints teams. What do you expect today as the Saints play host to the Monks? Well, Matt, I expect an absolute bloodbath for the Saints, a chance at a GNAC 3 -peat. You make that count. 
And what more can you say about this opportunity? I mean, this is what you play for. Whether you're a freshman, or you're a recruit, or you're an up-and-coming upperclassman, whatever it may be, whether it's the injuries, the hard practices, the tough games, the COVID protocols, all the things you've worked for on both teams, you get presented with this amazing opportunity to hoist the GNAC trophy. And for the Saints, can they make it three in a row? And for the Monks, this is a senior class that is getting their chance to kind of put themselves back in the conversation. They're a team who has been here. They've been to this game both years that there's been a season. Obviously, we lost last season, so there was no championship game. Both times that they've had the opportunity to, they've come to Emmanuel and they've played for the championship. They haven't been able to come through with the win. Can they do it here today? You look at the players. It's Cassandra Stapelfeld, Kaylee Walsh, Grace Philippon, and Allison Fillion. This is a really good group of seniors who thinks that they deserve that GNAC title on their resume and thinking that they can maybe get it here today. And it's a team that, you know, they had a little bit of a downstretch in terms of St. Joe's, right? They, they finished 22-4 and four overall. Four losses for a Mike McDevitt team is almost considered a bad season, but this St. Joe's team, extremely talented, extremely good at shooting the three, and defensively, right there with the Saints, Saints give up 54 points a game, best in the GNAC. Monks give up 55 points a game, just a point behind them. So this is a defensive matchup that we really expect is going to be a, a great matchup for the GNAC title and one I think we all deserve after missing out on last season, two teams that are just playing their best basketball at the right time. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. And really the winning strategy for the Saints, you got to you got to really prevent a three-point barrage, disrupt all their offensive rhythm. You know, I spoke to Yanni Chan, and she said, we have to handle our business. Kate Barker said, we have to really be disciplined, less reaching, and it'll be interesting to see if the Saints can really play terrific defense as they have so often at home. And we're going to take a quick look at the starting lineups now as we approach tip-off of the GNAC Championship game on, on ECTV, starting first with the visiting Monks of St. Joe's College. 22-4 and four overall, 14-2 in the GNAC, coached by Mike McDevitt in his 30th season. Last week picked up his 600th career win. Just 12 active coaches done that, including Andy Yozanoff. They'll come out, no changes for them. The same lineup they've rolled with all season. Senior guard, number 12, Cassandra Stapelfeld. Senior forward, number 13, Kaylee Walsh. Sophomore forward, number 20, Angelica Hurley. A senior forward, number 24, Grace Philippon. And a junior guard, number 30, Jane Howe. Now for the starters for the Saints, here's Alex. Thank you, Matt. Starting for your undefeated in GNAC play, Emanuel College Saints, number two, Corey Mathis, the senior guard out of Duluth, Georgia. Number four, Jamad Finn, the graduate guard. Number 13, Yanni Chan. The first year forward, number 14, Riley Lahith, the senior out of North Attleboro, Massachusetts. And number five, number 45, Laura Donna D'Agostino, head coach Andy Yosinoff, assistant coaches Arthur Howell, Megan Kerwin, and Chelsea Dunham. We are just moments away from the GNAC championship game. The one seed Saints, the three seeded Monks, in their third straight meeting in the GNAC championship game here at Andy Yosinoff Court. And tip off is next. We'll be right back after the starting lineups and the national anthem. Then it's tip off of the GNAC championship game here on ECTV.
That will do it for the pregame, and it's time for tip-off in the GNAC Championship between the third seed Monks and the top seed Saints on ECTV. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. Alex Chips and Matt LePan with you here for Championship Sunday here in the GNAC as your Manual College Saints play host to the Monks of St. Joe's College in Maine. Quick look back at the starting lines before we get started. First for the visiting Monks who will come out in their away royal blue uniforms with the white lettering and black trim. Working left to right across your screen with St. Joe's written across the chest. They'll come out with Staplefeld, Walsh, Hurley, Philippon, and Jane Howe. Starters for your Saints coming out in their home lights with the gold numerals and the blue lettering, blue and gold trim with the St. Bernard logo on either thigh. They'll work right to left across your screen with Mathis, Finn, Chan, Lahif, and D'Agostino. As Alex, we are set to tip off here in a matchup between two legendary coaches, Mike McDevitt and Andy Yozanoff. This is a matchup that we've been waiting for all year, and it's finally here. We're set to tip. It will be Jane Howe and Loredana D'Agostino who will tip us off here in the GNAC. A good crowd here at Andy Yozanoff Court. Here we go. We are underway, and the Saints control the opening tip. Mathis will get to Finn, and now goes to the far side to Chan. Yanni comes up top. 2-3 zone from the Monks, as expected. Skip to the far side. Now it goes underneath D'Agostino on the baseline. She'll take the 15-footer and hit it. That's bread and butter for Lauren D'Agostino. Saints take the early 2-0 lead. They go 1-2-1-1 one, one, one on the zone press to start the game. This one tipped by Chan, but recovered by Staplefeld. Staplefeld gets it up the far side to Jane Howe. Will come to the near side, nearly stolen, but Philippon will lay it up and in for two. Great job by Jane Howe. Long skip pass and easy two. And this is a Monks team that's very good at making quick cuts, and they read the press excellently. Great press bake. And on the Saints' end, great baseline jumper by D'Agostino. Lahif gets in the lane, gives it up to Mathis. Little elbow jumper up, no good. Finn on the weak side, can't control the rebound, and it's down to Hurley. 2-2 Two -two the score, one minute gone in this one. Hurley will bring this one up. Hurley has played extremely well for the Monks all season. She's picked up deep. Now it comes to the near side to Walsh, who's picked up by Finn. Man-to-man -man defense from the Saints. Andy Ozanov said this is what he's been going with late in the season, and he's going to continue. As Philippon can't get the layup, but gets her own rebound. Backdoor cut by Staplefeld, who gets it blocked by Chan. And now Lahif gets it. Back the other way come the Saints. Big play there by Yanni Chan. Chan is amped. What a play by her. Great block. Finn gives it up. 18-footer. D'Agostino got another one. Lauren is third in the GNAC in shooting at 50% on the season. She has all four of the Saints points. It's 4-2 with a minute and a half gone. She's got a great jumper inside the three-point line. And a foul called there on Riley Lahif. That's actually a good foul. This 1-2-1-1, one, one, one. the Monks are breaking it by sending two deep. They've broken it almost twice. They had two players wide open in the front court with only D'Agostino back to defend. Andy Ozanov might want to adjust on that one. No, certainly. And this is a Monks team that Mike McDevitt has prepared them for this nightmarish Emmanuel College press. So believe me, they're going to try to create great looks off of that. Staplefeld comes inside, goes to the far side of Walsh. Now it's Jane Howe cutting into the lane, skipped up top. Staplefeld closed out, and she travels. Great close out by Corey Mathis. I'm shocked that Staplefeld didn't take that. The number two three-point shooter in the GNAC with a wide open look. Little hesitation, and it's the first turnover on either side. Yeah, can't hesitate in a game like this. Got to be bombs away. But yeah, great close out by Corey Mathis. She's good at reading plays like that. D'Agostino calling for it and gets it. Nice feed to a cutting Jamad Finn who lays it up and in. Nice cut from Jamad. Andy Ozanov is his team, very complimentary of the cuts that are made by the Monks. Jamad made a great one there, and now they continue to press up 6-2. Oh, and, and Jamad Finn is great coming down the free throw line into the paint. She makes awesome cuts. And it's stolen there, and a whistle blown, and that is tough. The official called the 10 second. The Saints had already gotten the steal, and that's, that's a four-on-one break for the Saints that the official blew because he blew the whistle. You, you got to let him play. That's, it's a tough one there, and I get it. He, he pointed to himself. He knows that he messed that up, but that is a four-on-one break for the Saints. We'll see what happens here as that one nearly stolen, but Chan gets it to D'Agostino. She'll take the little hook shot. No good. Chan with the offensive board lays it up. No good. Rebound right back to her. Goes right back up and won't get to go. And so it ends up working out for the Monks. That whistle prevents a bucket from the Saints. They had a couple good looks at it, and they lead 6-2, 7-30 left in the first quarter. you got to shake your head at that, but great activity by Chan. She's going to start capitalizing off those offensive rebounds. And Howe hits the jumper. Jane Howe with a foot on the three-point line. Hits the long two at 6-4, the lead. 7-20 left in the first. And the long two not usually advised, but Howe can definitely knock those down. So good shot for her. Live with it now. Jamad Finn will take the three. First three of the game. Hits it. 
Jamad started slow in each of the last two games, said she wasn't going to allow herself to do that here today. She already has five in the first three minutes. And she's averaging 22 points per game against the Monks on the season. She's a Monks killer. Monks had a three on none break, but Jamad Finn breaks it up. D'Agostino went for the steal. It was three on none, but unfortunately Walsh could not get that one past half court, and eventually Jamad Finn, good job getting back. Breaks it up. 23 on the shot clock here for the Monks. That's what it's all about. Defensive disruption. St. Joe's thought they had an easy shot. Instead, Jamad Finn breaking up the pass. Staplefeld picked up by Mathis now. Up top it comes to Walsh. Walsh will drive. She traveled with it. I don't know if I saw it, but it's the third turnover for the Monks. Saints yet to turn it over, and we'll get some changes here. As Walsh, Philippon, and Hurley will go out. Coming on will be number five, Haley Anderson. Joining her will be number 11, Nina Howe. And finally, the third one on is Hannah Talon, the sophomore out of Wyndham, Maine. And those last two turnovers, uncharacteristic from the Monks, but they have a tall task. They match up well against the Saints, but they are coming with another road game here. That's a tough drive for them coming out of Standish, Maine. Inside goes to D'Agostino, who will lay it up no good, gets the rebound right back and puts it up and in for two. It's 11-4, and the Monks will take the timeout. 6-25 remaining in the first quarter. A dream start for the Saints. They lead 11-4 here on your home for Saints basketball, ECTV. Mike McDevitt taking that timeout, and he went three deep on his bench there. If you look at the, the breakdown of minutes, they never really go further than that. And the Saints still have their starters in, leading 11-4, and has for, have forced the Monks to go onto their bench. Alex, you mentioned the travel. They had to go yesterday down to Albertus Magnus, and they got a win over a very tough, very tough Albertus team, the number two seed. They pulled the upset, had to go all the way back up to Standish to come all the way back down to Boston. You mentioned it, and it's true. It's a lot of travel for, for a 24-hour span. And look, I'm sure his team will travel well ultimately in this game, but getting off to a slow start against the Saints, really the last thing you can afford. And word to the wise, can't give Loredana D'Agostino two good looks at the basket, as they did on the last possession. Saints will continue to press up 11-4. Staplefeld now to the far side to Nina Howell, and that one knocked away by Lahif. Lahif has been averaging six steals a game in the playoff. Saints is a team averaging 20 steals a game in the in the two opening rounds. Just otherworldly numbers defensively. It's incredible anticipation. It often feels like the Saints defensively are one step ahead of whatever team is bringing the ball up. Far side, this one goes to Nina Howe. Mm. Dagas, excuse me, Lahif takes a seat. Staplefeld with, Staplefeld with it. Going to come up top to Nina Howe. Ten on the shot clock here. This is Talon who gets in the lane. Cut off there, back up top. Nina Howe will take the three off the mark. Rebound pulled down with one hand by Lahif, and she's fouled by Jane Howe. Nina Howe, don't sleep on her three-point shooting. She was 12th in the GNAC in three-point shooting on the year despite playing limited minutes for Mike McDevitt. She can really light it up from out there, and in warm-up, she couldn't miss. Had a good look there. Well, and Howe hit some big triples against us earlier in this season, so she's certainly primed and ready for whatever opportunity comes her way and whatever minute she gets. She hit the three that sent it to overtime up in Standish. Just and excellent. Allison Wilde comes on. Yanni Chan will go to the bench. Yanni in four minutes with two rebounds and a block. Far side to Lahif. Inside it goes to Wild. Foul line extended. She'll turn, face, give back up. Lahif up fake. Gives it up to Mathis on the near side. Corey crosses over with 10 on the shot clock. Gets a pick. Back up top. Lahif up fake. Goes back to Finn. Finn off her knee and she traveled with it. It's that little jump step in the Saints. Little indecisive with the ball, but good closeouts. This Monks team, so their backups are, are more the defensive lineup than their starters, which can light it up offensively. And so they have their defensive lineup in, and they force the first turn turnover for the Saints. And that's why it would be hard for the Saints to pull away in a game like this. St. Joe's tough defense. They tend to, you know, they, they go in through droughts, but then they make runs. Up top it comes to Anderson into the near side corner to Talon. Talon goes baseline. Anderson. Had Staplefeld, and she's called for the travel. Another turnover for the Monks. Uncharacteristic already with four turnovers. On the season, the Monks only averaged 13 turnovers a game. They already have four in the opening five minutes as we have 5.05 left in the first. Saints leading 11-4. Neither team has scored in close to two minutes here. Yeah, the defenses have really clamped up for the Saints. You just try to get this thing to double digits. Wild with it now. Far side, Amari Faust, who just came into the game. Amari needs to go somewhere with it. Comes to the near side to Wild. Now Lahif in the near side corner with 10 on the shot clock. Goes baseline, gets by and lays it up and in. Strong move by Riley Lahif, and she said in the pregame, 
this is our moment, and we're going after them today. Andy Ozanov repeated those same words, and Lahif gets her first two there. It's 13-4. to four. And Lahif can take a baseline. That was a great take to the basket. Staplefeld will tee up the three. Off the mark, rebound tipped by Jane Howe, and it will go out of bounds on the far side. Anderson tried to save it. Again, you have Staplefeld and Howe both missing threes. Not something you're going to see a whole lot of. No. As we have Jane Howe, Staplefeld, and Anderson going out. Philippon going to come back on. Coming back on as well will be Kaylee Walsh as well as Angelica Hurley. So this is a bit of a bigger lineup here for Mike McDevitt. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a gutsy call. Nice feed inside to D'Agostino Lahiff with a beautiful feed there. She led the Saints in assists during the season. It's 15-4 to four with 4.05 left in the first. And that's the kind of chemistry you can build over the course of three or four seasons. And that's what you saw there, Lahiff to D'Agostino on the feed. Hurley with it. Hurley, hand check called on Amari Faust. Hurley's smart. She knows she's kind of an in-between player. She's that guard forward combo. She had Faust on her and said, I'm going to the post. I'm just going to post up and go here. As Olivia Metella comes on, Jamad Finn will head to the bench. Jamad in six minutes of action had five points and an assist. Nina Howell will inbound on the near side, sends it in. Nice feed. Layup is no good. As away with it comes Lahif. Now Lahif's going to look to push. Riley going to bring it right up the middle of the floor and now slow it down. Finds Matella on the far side wing. Olivia, her first touch, gives it up to Wild. Skip to the near side to Faust. Amari working on Philippon. Needs to go somewhere with it. Needs some help. And eventually D'Agostino comes to it. Skip to the far side. Lahif gives the up fake. Step back. 15-footer. Good. Oh. Saints are shooting 8 of 13 from the field. It's 17-4 to four with three and a half left in the first quarter. Saints are running away with it early. Saints really just picking up right where they left off yesterday. And now Mattella will get the steal. Olivia in a foot race here. Will go right to the hoop, light up the left hand. No good as the rebound comes down to Kaylee Walsh. And Mattella a little sped up there. Walsh, good job closing out on that defensive break. Yeah, just lost her focus for a moment there. But I think the Saints are doing pretty well right now. And now Mattella gives it right back, though. She forces a turnover. And already the Monks have six. The Saints have turned to six points plus whatever they make off of it here as Nina Howe will go off along with Hannah Tallon. And looks like the starter's all back on the floor for Mike McDevitt. And that's something I admire about Mattella. When I spoke to her yesterday, she said, I feed off the energy of both her teammates and the crowd. Somebody that really comes in the game and can change the way things are going, the flow of the game with her big defensive plays and offensive playmaking. Just dipped under three minutes. Faust has to save this one and does, but it's going to be a backcourt violation. Ah. Turnover for the Saints, just their second. But they lead 17-4, 249 remaining in the first quarter. And if you look, the Monks only turned it over 12 times in the overtime game up in Maine as Lahiff will come off and Kira Eubanks will come on. They only turned it over 12 times in that game that went to overtime. They've already turned it over six in the less than the first quarter. Right, and the issue with both of those games against the Monks, the Saints couldn't quite pull away and make things comfortable. We'll see if they can do that today. Gene Howe will take the three, try to bank it home. No good. Mm -hmm. Eubanks grabs a rebound. Wild up ahead of the pack. Faust trying to find her. She does, but she loses wow. the handle. Nice feed by Amari Faust and Allison Wild. They tried to reward her. She broke up there fast, but it's two turnovers in a row for the Saints. They have three on the game. Still holding this 13-point lead with 2.32 left in the first. And this is where you can't afford to be sloppy. And props to Kira Eubanks on the rebound just before that, using her length very well. Andy Ozanov had high praise for Kira when I spoke with him today. He said that defensively she's playing as well as anyone on the team. Rebound here to Faust. Faust going to bring it right up the middle of the floor, splits a defender and gets fouled. I believe they're going to call that on Jane Howe. That's going to be her second, just the second on the team. Both have gone on their starting center. And I love Faust being in attack mode right there. She tried to go right through the teeth of the defense. Yanni Chan's going to come back on. I believe D'Agostino's going to come off, and she does. Four six from the field, eight points, a rebound, and an assist for D'Agostino. We didn't mention Lahif when she went off, but four points, three rebounds, and two assists already for Lahif in seven minutes of action. The veterans coming up big so far, Matt. Approaching two minutes left in the first quarter. Saints holding the 17-4 lead. They've held the Monks without a bucket since the seven-minute mark. As Wild will lay it up and in. It's 19-4, 15-point lead with two minutes left in the first. I don't know if I've ever seen the Saints do this to the Monks. It's incredible. And that play right there by Wild was muscle memory. That's blocked right there by Eubanks. That was Philippon who was coming in. And the Saints have the chance to go up by, by 17 here. The Saints are bringing it already. Very impressive. Wild can take the long two off the mark. Gets her own rebound. Goes inside. Lays it up off the bottom of the backboard. Can't get it. Matella open. Top of the key. 
Off the mark, rebound pulled down by Chan. Chan gets back in the lane, bumped in, won't get the bucket. We thought that was going to be a three-point play. This gym <laughs> would have exploded. But Yanni Chan with her second off, or excuse me, her third offensive rebound already will head to the free throw line for the first time today. And that play would have absolutely brought down the house map. But I just love the activity by the Saints crashing the boards so well. Already six offensive rebounds for them. Chan will take two free throws here. Yanni can't get the first on the season. Yanni was a 73% free throw shooter. Saints shot just 65% as a team as Amari Faust will go out and back on will come Jamad Finn. Yanni gets the second one. It's 20 to four with 89 seconds left here in the first quarter. Something that I never thought I would say is oh the Saints gosh, running away with the GNAC championship game and they almost get a steal there. Inside it goes, Hurley, that's blocked, oh. but Wild came over late and got her with the body. Again, the gym was ready to explode there. <laughs> Wild had the block, but ended up getting her with the hip, and it's Jane Howell that's going to head to the free throw line for the first time today. And that's the thing, too. The crowd's definitely into it, but if the Saints really fulfill one of these plays and make something happen, it's going to be even harder for an already uphill battle. How an 83% free throw shooter. Saints shoot 65% of the team. The Monks, on the other hand, the best shooting free throw team in the GNAC at 74.4% as a team. No, they certainly make it count. Saints can't afford to be fouling like that. And those are the first two points in almost six minutes. It was 7.02 the last time the Monks had a bucket. They haven't had a bucket since then, but with 116 left, it's 20 to 6. Saints have really done a great job opening this one up. And what's crazy, Matt, is how many times have we said that about this team throughout the season? Dominant defensive stretches. They did it in the last four minutes of the first game against the Monks as well. Inside it goes to Chan. Back up top, Eubanks. Now Finn on the weak side. One minute left in the first quarter. Wild top of the key comes to the near side to Chan. Trying to go into Eubanks, but the double team's there. Skip Barker on the weak side. And three seconds called on Kira Eubanks. So it's going to be another turnover for the Saints. They've had four. They had just one through the first five minutes. So they've had three in the past four minutes or so. They Still leading 20 to 6. Right, but you can't let your foot off the gas pedal for the, if you're the Saints. A couple sloppy turnovers. Got to try to build on this lead because this St. Joe's team, they can come back. They get it right back from Chan. Chan's pushing tempo, finds Eubanks. Eubanks wisely gives it up to Wild. Up top, Finn, all alone, three in the air. Off the mark, rebound on the weak side. Goes to Angelica Hurley, her second. Hurley will send it up the far side to Nina Howe. In the corner, it's Jane Howe. Cut off by Eubanks. Good defense there. Knocked away and oh. stolen again by Chan. Chan's third seal already. And then she gets bumped, and the Saints save it. It goes on the floor and turnover. Nina Howe with it. Up ahead. This is Hurley. Hurley going to skip to the near side. Staplefeld all alone. Three in the air. Got it. Mm -mm. Too easy. First three of the quarter goes to Staplefeld in the final five seconds here. Finn will bring it across with four, with three, with one. Going to fade to the right and bank it home. No good. I think Jamad forgot how much time was on the clock. She started to go slow there, and Andy Ozanov is really giving it to the officials as he's getting a warning here in between quarters. But end of the first quarter, the Saints come out on absolute fire. They shoot 45%, and they lead 20 to 9 on your home for Saints basketball, ECTV. While they're shooting 45%, something to keep an eye on here, Alex. They were 7 of 15, or excuse me, 7 of, yeah, 7 of 15. At one point in this one, they're now just 9 with 20, so they only hit two of their last six. Yeah, the Saints' offense has junked up a little bit. they got to stay in rhythm. Again, keep your foot on the gas pedal. You forced nine turnovers already. The defense has just been so solid for Emmanuel. Now it's a matter of continuing to capitalize off of those miscues. The Monks really don't turn it over much, but in the game, last game they played here at Andy Ozanov Court, back on January 8th, they had 27 turnovers, a season high. They only had 12 in the game up at Standish, Maine, where it went to overtime. They have nine in the first quarter. Something to keep an eye on. They shoot just 27%. Someone to keep an eye on, too. Yenny Chan, three, three steals, three rebounds, and a block in that first quarter in just six minutes of action. Played very well defensively. She and Riley LaHiff really have kind of turned the tempo here on the Monks by playing such good defense. Monks yeah. come out for the second quarter with Nina Howe, Philippon. Staplefeld, Walsh, and Hurley. Saints come out with Lahiff, Barker, Chan, D'Agostino, and Finn. And, and Chan has just been all over the place defensively. Great anticipation, getting in the passing lanes, always having a hand up, and really disrupting 
what the Monks are trying to accomplish today. Saints going zone to start the second quarter. So a little surprising after chatting with Andy Ozanov. Sounded like he wanted to go man all day. Hurley going to skip it in the corner. Nina Howe. Nina trying to find the backdoor cut. Won't get there. Has to go all the way up top to Hurley with eight on the shot clock. Back up top, Hurley with five. Going to have to take a deep three. Well off the mark. And I don't know if Barker got a piece of that. She did not. Great defensive possession again by the Saints. They make them use the entire possession, the entire shot clock, and throw up an air ball, trailing 20 to 9. And it's hard because the Saints actually made them reset about half court with the shot clock winding down. And really, at that point, almost no man's land. Barker with it now. Barker going to drive. Had a hot start the other day. Looks to continue. It can't get to go. Rebound. Jamad Finn somehow came away with it, but loses the ball on the floor. And it's going to be a jump ball that will come back to the Saints. Finn's out there hustling. Something to keep an eye on, though. She just got rolled up on underneath on. That left arm got caught underneath. As off will come Kate Barker and back on will come Corey Mathis. So the starting five out there for the Saints. Finn might have hit her knee, too, as she's kind of reaching down at that right leg. Definitely something to keep an eye on, Matt. Again, she has been so good against the St. Joseph's Monks this season. And we're hoping to see her continue that stretch this afternoon. As they have 17 on the shot clock in D'Agostino. Little turnaround up and off the glass. Double digits for Laura Donna D'Agostino. 10 in the first half. It's 22 to 9 with 9.05 left in the half. And she's a big game player. She caught the ball on the block, turned and banked it. You mentioned Finn. She averaged 16 points a game against the Monks this season. As a foul going to go there on Corey Mathis. 23 on the shot clock for the Monks. Nina Howell will inbound on the near side. Stapelfeld making some moves here. It's going to come into Hurley instead. Picked up by Lahiff. Hurley going to try to drive. Lahiff cuts her off. Nice drop step to the inside. A beautiful move. She caught Lahiff going, trying to force her inside. She went right with it and laid it in for two. D'Agostino up on the near side. Now the Saints looking to reset, leading 22 to 11. Lahiff going to drive on Philippon. Clear some space. Offensive foul. Ah. At the whole way. Philippon sold it a little bit, but Lahiff doesn't like it. Riley picks up her second. With 8.43 left in the first, that's going to get Mattel off the bench. And that's a big one because Riley's played really well. Four points, three rebounds, two assists so far, and has played very good defense. She'll head off for, you got to think, at least the next five minutes. So Mattel will get an extended run. And Lahiff is someone that's always looking to create space for her jumper, but just the push off there, got to be careful with the hands. Hurley gets away with one there, and now she goes inside. Got away with a foul and a travel, according to Andy Ozanov, but she <laughs> lays it up and in. She now has four. It's 22-13. The Monks chipping away here. The Monks got a few players who can really take it to the basket. That's been on display the last two possessions. Matella corner three in the air. Off the mark, rebound, tipped. Tipped again, and Philippon going to come away with it. So the Saints offense has really slowed down here. Just one bucket in the past five minutes of game action. Staplefeld comes up top. It goes to Hurley. Back to the far side to Walsh. Walsh going to drive. Cut off there. Back up top. Hurley gives a fake. Goes in the lane. Has that one knocked away. And a late foul no. called. Mm -mm -mm. And that's going to be the third foul on the Saints with 7.57 left in the quarter. Goes on Yanni Chan. Hurley will inbound next to the Saints bench across from us. 20 on the shot clock here. About two minutes gone in the second quarter. This was 16 at one point. With this shot off the mark, that could have gotten it all the way down to six. And Andy told his team, expect a tit-for-tat affair. Saints still comfortably at nine, but they really have to start getting their offense gelling. Mathis with it. Gives it up to Finn. Now Matella. Olivia. Step back. Long two in the air. Got it. Nice. Matella needed that one. That's her first bucket of the day. She was 0 for, 4 before, 0 for 3 before that. 24-13, the Saints lead. Two and a half gone here in the second. And Matella is someone who is quietly very underrated at creating her own shot off the dribble. She's got good crossover moves. Walsh gives it up to, ha to Hurley. Excuse me, we'll take three off the mark. Staplefeld, weak side offensive board. Goes up and under and lays it in. Don't sleep on Cassandra Staplefeld. She's got five. It's 24-15, back at nine. Well, she's a top scorer in the GNAC for a reason. She works the baseline well. She has great takes to the basket. She can work the baseline or go free throw line down. Chance, step back jumper, no good. I think the Saints are settling a little bit too much for jumpers here, and it's allowed the Monks to really get back into this one. Again, this was 16, and the Saints were running away with it. Monks get in the lane here and throw up a runner. That's no good, but they could have gotten it down to seven. Mm -hmm. Finn back the other way with it. 
Jamad looking to push the tempo. Jamad going to take it right to the hoop. Going to throw up a runner, and she's called for the travel. Ah. Good defense there by Hurley, and Hurley's really starting to affect the Saints here on both ends of the floor. And Andy Oznov's going to take the timeout. 6.39 remaining in the half. Saints leading 24-15 on your home for Saints basketball, ECTV. And again, it's it's been teetering. So it's 116 points. It's sitting right now at 9. Saints shooting down to 44%. Monks have hit each of their last four, and they're up to 33% shooting. Again, 24-15 the score. And Alex, I mentioned a minute ago, it looks like the Saints are getting a little jumper happy. This has happened in stretches throughout the season. When they've been successful, it's been getting inside to D'Agostino and then creating some lanes to get some, some runners and then opening up the three. They're kind of going in reverse right now. Right, and there was, some, there was a little bit of iso ball there that was a bit problematic. It worked for Mattel. It didn't work as well on that last shot for the Saints. Nina so Howe with Stapelfeld, Walsh, Talon, and Hurley. For the Saints, Mathis, Finn, Mattel, Chan, and D'Agostino. 2-2-1 two, two, zone pressure this time from the Saints. Up head it goes to Gene Howe, and that's nice. blocked by D'Agostino. Back comes Chan the other way. Chan three on two the other way on the break. Gives it up to Mattel. Mattel cut off there. Good job by the Monks getting back. Finn. Travel. Another turnover for the Saints. They're up to eight, and the Monks haven't turned it over in this second quarter. That's been the difference. And, and Jamad really should have taken that. Andy was getting on her a little bit about that, but that is her shot. So can, she's got to knock that down. Can read his lips from here. He just told her, you know you should have taken that. 6.15 left in the half. Saints leading 24-15. Staplefeld going to drive. Gets in the lane, kicks it out to Anderson. Up top, Jane Howe. Jane goes underneath. Talon throws it up, no good. Finn rips down another rebound. Jamad grabbing her third rebound. Quickly up ahead to Mattel on the front court. Saints will reset the offense. D'Agostino's got Staplefeld on her, and the Saints just can't get it in there. Mathis will take the long two instead and hit it. So still a jumper, but at least the Saints get it. Mathis on the board, 26-15, the lead back to double digits. And off the time, defense is sleep on Mathis, which gives her easy looks. Long jumpers, but good looks for her. Staplefeld working on Matella. Clear some space, goes back up top to Hurley. Hurley working on Finn, going to drive. Nice feed underneath and an easy two for Hannah Talon, and that's what Hurley can do. Just a beautiful feed around both D'Agostino and Finn. And Talon has, has a score in the lane. And a quick three from Olivia Matella gets it back to a dozen. 29-17, 5-18 left here in the first half. The Saints... Keeping that lead at 12, but the Monks really starting to turn it on offensively. Got to keep them at arm's length, and Mattel is stepping up for a big three. Staplefeld can't answer with the three, and D'Agostino rips down her second rebound. So tough on the boards. D'Agostino, great fundamentals for a big like her. Into Chan, gets some space, gets bumped, and they call that one a block. Andy Ozanov can't believe it. Staplefeld, double team comes. Now up top to Jane Howe. Howe, three on two the other way. Talon going to look to get in the lane, and a hand check called on Olivia Matella. Mm. And that's five fouls now, so Matella picks up her first, but the Monks are going to shoot for the final 443. And again, this is something that the Saints have to be careful about on the reaches. They play a very aggressive style of defense going after steals, and you see it backfire there. Hurley out, excuse me, that's the fourth, so they up the... Scoreboard was wrong. Anderson will tee off the three mm -hmm. off the inbound and hit it. Saints fell asleep, and Anderson hits the three, cuts it back to nine. I was just about to say, caught him sleeping. She gets an easy three from the corner. Just can't afford that. Monks now two of eight from three. Saints two of six. Inside D'Agostino, little 10-footer. Won't rattle home. Rebound ah. tipped around. Jane Howe came away with it and stepped out of bounds. Or no, called for the travel. She was trying to throw that one off of Matella. Missed on her, but she did that little shuffle. Well, she waited, and that's the first turnover of the second quarter for the Monks, 10th overall. And the Monks caught a break there. D'Agostino just rimming out on a great shot for her, but she's not going to miss those too often, so they really got to clamp up. Wild in. Finn will inbound on the far side. It goes right into Allison. Handoff. Matella behind the pick. Gets in the lane. We'll throw up a little runner. Gets oh. it to go. Olivia's starting to heat up here. Started 0 for 3, has hit each of her last three. She has seven, it's 31-20. Saints back to double digits with 4-10 left in the half. And the runner looked a little wild, but for Mattella, she knows how to square up on those finishes. Anderson goes underneath to Nina Howe. Drives the baseline, swung up top. Staplefeld will take a three and make a three. Can't hold her down for too long. She hits that three and cuts it to eight. This is as close as it's been since midway through the first. No, and that's one thing she's going to do. She's going to get hers. Staplefeld stepping up for that 
classic wing three-pointer that she's become known for. 31-23, the Saints lead into D'Agostino. Beautiful feed, goes up on the other side, can't get it. Rebound on the floor, Matella comes away with it and calls the timeout. Going to be called jump ball, though, before the timeout, so it'll go back to the Monks. That's going to get Kira Eubanks in the game. I believe D'Agostino will come off, and she does. And great hustle by the Saints on oh, a few of these Oh, it's Chan plays. that comes off here, so Saints huh. going real big now with D'Agostino, Eubanks, and Wild all on the floor. So that's 6-1, six, 6 feet, and 6 feet in the front court for Andy Ozanov. Wow. Nina Howe with it. Good job by Mattel to close her out. Staplefeld picked up by Finn in the lane. Little runner, Eubanks, blocked the shot partially and eventually gets the rebound, and then she gets fouled. I'll tell you, I, I had a chance to chat with Andy Ozanov about his bench. He mentioned Kira Eubanks by name. The big difference is, and you can't see it here, but she's learned that going straight up with two hands is just as good as trying to reach with that one hand and trying to get the block, and it has completely changed how she plays defensively. As you saw it there, as a partial block and then the rebound, those long arms of hers have really benefited her, and Andy made sure to call that one out. It's defensive principles. It's verticality, and it's good to see Eubanks already starting to perfect that art in just her first season here. Philippon Hurley and Jane Howell are going to come back on for the Monks. Three minutes left here in the half, and Eubanks mm -hmm. traveled with it. Another turnover for the Saints. They now have nine, and the Monks only have ten. Monks have one here in this second quarter, and they've done a great job. That's what's allowed them to get back into this game is cutting back those turnovers. And that first quarter break did them well. And look, this is a tough team. St. Joe's is going to hang in there, and they're going to make their runs. Can't afford them good looks. As we say that, they get their second turnover of the quarter, <laughs> and it is Jane Howe who gets the turnover. 2.52 left in the half. Saints leading 31-23. And again, the Saints still just struggling a little bit offensively. They have just 11 points in the last eight minutes of game action, or excuse me, 10 minutes of game action. As Finn will lay it up go. for two on the foul. They're finally getting back inside. It's what we've been calling for. Jamad does it there, and we'll get to the free throw line, looking to extend this one back to 11. And Saints have the muscle advantage in the paint. They can make plays like that. Jamad Finn, she's become such a tough finisher over the years, and she shows us that right there. That's the second on Philippon, and she'll come right out in town. We'll come back on. Jamad, an 85% free throw shooter, best on the team, and third in the GNAC. Gets that one to go. It's back to 11. 34 23, 240 remaining in the first half. Near side, it comes to Talon, working on Eubanks. Clears some space, gets the link, cut off by D'Agostino on a travel. Another one. It's the bigs, this, this big lineup. Andy hasn't gone to this all year. I, we've never seen a lineup that had three six foot players in it for the Saints this season. He goes to it here and has forced tur two turnovers in a row. Eubanks and D'Agostino have forced them both. And that's the thing I was going to say going into this game. There's nothing you knew you can show Mike McDevitt. They did it there, though. D'Agostino, a little fadeaway in the paint. She's got a dozen to lead all scorers. Saints back to 13, 36-23, making a run here. It's 6-0 run. Excuse me, a 7-0 run. That one knocked away and stolen again. Up to Finn. And then knocked away. Ah. Nina How great recovery. She turned it over, then stole it right back. That is what the Monks will do to you defensively. Quick hands by Howe. Now Jane Howe with it. Working on the far side, gets it to Nina. Tried to find the backdoor cut. Step back, has to give it up top. Near side, Talon. 15 on the shot clock, approaching a minute and a half left. Skip to the far side, Nina Howe in the corner. Three in the air from Walsh is off the mark and going to go out of bounds. Back to the Saints. And with a minute 37 left, Staplefeld going to come back on. Nina Howe will go to the bench. Nina with two steals to lead the Monks. She has the only two steals of the game for the Monks. Again, quick hands for Howe. And for the Saints, this defense has really held their own in this quarter. They've given up 14 points, but it's so much more than that. And that's how they've kept this lead comfortable. Inside D'Agostino got bumped and going to get to the free throw line. This is what we were talking about. In the first quarter, they constantly had a defender fronting D'Agostino, and they lofted it over to her. Saints got away from it. They've been doing it here, and this is what's led to this run. And Loredana will get two free throws here where she shot 65% on the season. And again, you want to talk about one of the most consistent players that Andy Ozanov has had. It's been Loredan D'Agostino all four years as she gets the first one. It has really just been consistent game in, game out, about 12 points and about eight rebounds. She had averaged 11 and six, or excuse me, 11 and seven this season. 
And she can't get that one to go. Rebound pulled down by Hurley. Hurley picks up her third rebound. And that's what you admire about Laura Donna D'Agostino, a double-double machine. This one up, Stapleville can't get it. D'Agostino grabs it, and Ooh. she got rolled under. Oh, that one hurts. Landed on the top of the foot of Talon. And immediately you saw that ankle roll over. That is the worst play you can see in basketball. She grabbed that rebound and got Goodness. undercut. As she is down on the floor, Saints leading 37-23, a minute 10 left in the half. And again, D'Agostino went up for the rebound, came down on top of the foot of Talon, who was retreating back and just rolled that ankle right mm -hmm. over and hit the floor hard. Loredana already with 13 points, three rebounds in 17 minutes, and it just completely silences the crowd here at Andy Ozanoff Court. We want to thank you for tuning in to Emmanuel College Basketball and ECTV, the GNAC championship game here at Andy Ozanoff Court. And for Lauren, this was really the first season where she was healthy all season. She dealt with a broken nose in 2019-20. She dealt with knee injuries her freshman and sophomore year, and they're actually they're going for the knee. That's that bad knee. That's that left knee. Oh. She tore the ACL her freshman year just one game into her career. Or excuse me, two games into her career. And she's going to try to come up here. Andy Ozanov will help her up. Hopefully it was just a scare, but she's limping off pretty good. We'll get you updates as soon as we can, but that's a big blow to the Saints. 17 minutes so far, Moradonna, 6 of 10 from the field, 13 points. She heads right to the training table. Ah, you just hate to see oh, it, someone who's I played know. so well, and this is, you know, having her championship moment here right now. If the, if the game ended at the half, she'd be the MVP of the game. Angela Hunt's going to be the one that comes on. So the first time we'll see Hunt today, Hunt has six rebounds in each of the two games in the playoffs, average just one per game during the regular season. And Hunt is no slouch. This team can rally around what happened with D'Agostino because they're physical and they're tough. Eubank stepped back in the final minute, no good. Rebound pulled away by Kaylee Walsh. So we're in the final minute here. Saints leading 37-23, but the story is Laura Don D'Agostino getting her knee checked out. Walsh will step into a long two. Off the mark, Finn grabs another rebound. Fourth for, or excuse me, fifth for Jamad. Matella, Saints have a chance at two for one if they hurry here. Doesn't look like they're going to take it. So there's going to be about a 12 second differential between shot and game clock as the two for one now goes by. Matella with it, 14 on the shot clock. Indy Eubanks trying to do that same thing they did with D'Agostino, nice. and it works the same way. Eubanks gets her first two. Largest lead of the game right now for the Saints, 39-23. Final 15 seconds of the, of the half. And Eubanks is a big with polish and skill, and she does a great job turning and banking it off right-handed. Jane Howe with eight. Skip to the far side, Talon. Now underneath, Hurley with five. Hurley with three. Inside it goes. Kicked up top, Jane Howe with the buzzer. Got oh. it to beat the buzzer at the half and cut it to 13. So the Saints control the tempo throughout the half, but a buzzer beater at the end for the Monks keeps it close. 39-26 is the lead at the half. And the, again, the story is Laura Donna D'Agostino with a potential knee injury. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll try to get an update at the half. She limps off the floor, but the Saints control the half and they lead 39-26, 20 minutes down, 20 to go. We'll see if the Saints can clinch the GNAC championship in the second half. Alex and I will be back after this.
20 minutes remaining to decide a GNAC champion here on ECTV. The Saints hold the 39-26 lead at the half. Matt LePay and Alex Schiff's with you here. And Alex, the good news coming out of the half first. The Saints have the lead at 13 points. And Laura Donna D'Agostino, despite suffering what appeared to be a left knee injury during the end of the final minute of that, for, of that second quarter, is back out on the floor. And Andy Ozanov said she is going to play here in the second half, watching her warm up, looking a little ginger on that knee, but it's a good sign for the Saints that she is playing as she had 13 points in the first half. Yeah, and D'Agostino, just a championship-level player. She's had so many gritty performances, and props to her for giving it a go here in the second half. And Quick. also for these other Emmanuel bigs, it's going to be a great opportunity. So it's, it's an exciting opportunity here in the second half, and the Saints already in great position. Quick look at the stats here. Saints shot 48.6% from the field. Just two of six from three in that half, and three of five from the free throw line. They forced 13 turnovers. The Monks shot 34.5%, four of 12 from three, and perfect from the free throw line. They forced 10 turnovers, but the difference there, Saints with 15 points off those 13 turnovers. Monks with five off of 10 turnovers. So the Saints capitalizing on those mistakes made by the Monks. Monks had nine turnovers in the first quarter. They only had four in the second quarter. You don't expect them to have 13 turnovers here in the second half. No. Saints are going to need to really start working inside again. And you saw again and again when they had the Monks fronting one of the Saints' bigs, that over-the-top lob pass that went in. D'Agostino made a killing off of it in that first half. Kira Eubanks had a nice play on it late in the half when D'Agostino went out. Look to see that play more and more. And defensively, Andy Ozanov told the two of us, 2-3 zone is what's going to happen here. We're not sure if that's because of matchups mm. or if that's to keep D'Agostino on the floor defensively. We're going to keep an eye on that because... The Monks are a team that move the ball really well. That's going to get them some open looks against the 2 3 zone. So, we'll, we'll, something to keep an eye on there. And, Alex, I, this is me just wondering. I, I wonder if the Saints are going to go back to that big lineup that they had late in the half that really the Monks were making their run. They had down to eight, and the Saints were able to force three consecutive turnovers with that lineup on the floor and get it back to 16. And those bigs are very adjustable, too. They closed out well, but also they're just sealing off the paint. This is a Monks team that loves to make good cuts to the basket on the baseline or what have you, and the Saints haven't allowed it whatsoever. So just great defense from them in that first half. Staplefeld, Walsh, Hurley, Philippon, and Gene Howe for the Monks. Working right to left for the Saints, Mathis, Finn, Chan, Lahip, and D'Agostino. Going to work left to right. Start with the ball here in the third quarter. We are underway in the third quarter. Saints leading 39-26. Trying to win their third consecutive GNAC championship. Finn in the lane, little runner up and in oh. for two. Jamad with a strong take right off the start. She's in double figures with 10. And that's just staying with it, staying strong as you head to the basket. Then she floats it up beautifully. Great job by Jamad Finn. Staplefeld closed out, goes into the corner. Lahif has that one knocked away and stolen by Corey Mathis. Back the other way go the Saints. Chan working up the far side. Mathis right at the middle of the floor. Skips it. Finn loses the handle but gets it back. They want her for that wing three. D'Agostino goes inside to Chan. Chan clears some space, gets in the lane, a little reverse nice. up and in for two. Yanni's first bucket is a left-handed reverse, and the Saints have their largest lead of the day. And Yanni with the high English off the glass going lefty. Love her finishes this season. Jane Howe with it, and that's blocked by, by Lahip from the backside. Chan with it, going to go far side. Finn tried to throw inside, kicked away by Hurley. And again, just loving the way the Saints are coming out. Two quick baskets in this second half already. Offensively, just trying to get this thing flowing. 43-26 is the lead. Finn, step back, long two. Off the mark, Chan gets another offensive board and lays it up and in. Mm -hmm. Yanni Chan is killing it on the offensive glass. That's her fourth offensive rebound. It's a 6-0 run to start it for the Saints. It's 45-26 up to 19 with 8.50 left in the third. And just like they did in the first quarter, the Saints coming out on fire. Well, Matt, you want to see resilience. Everyone went quiet when Laura Donna D'Agostino went down at the end of the second quarter. But here in this first half, in the second half, they have responded so well. Going in the paint, Yanni Chan, great action on a couple of those plays. And this is what you love. 45-26. We're going to take you to the out-of-town scoreboard. Today is Championship Sunday. St. Joe's of Connecticut looking to make it a perfect GNAC season again. Number 12 team in the country up 49-30 on Albertus Magnus at the half. Not overly surprising on the men's side of things, but we want to update you as that one went along. As Saints will come out here leading 45-26.
2-2-1 zone press, same five out there for both teams. Again, the big story is that D'Agostino is on the floor after an injury suffered late in the first in the first half. Far side, Philippon with it. Philippon held scoreless in that first half. Or excuse me, held to just two. Hurley goes in the corner, back to Philippon. Philippon going to go baseline. Knocked away by D'Agostino. Blocked by D'Agostino, but a foul called as she got the arm on the way down. That's going to put Philippon on the free throw line as Grace will get two. And they've made Philippon's job so difficult. Anytime she wants to get into the paint, she's met with bodies. And she gets to the line there, it works out. But overall, not so much. Monks 2-2 two two from the line on the day. Philippon a 71% free throw shooter. As she nets the first, 3-3 three three for the Monks on the day. Again, the best free throw shooting team in the GNAC by a wide margin by almost four percentage points. Jeez. Just so efficient across the board. They execute in so many different ways. She gets them both. She's up to four points. 45-28 is the Saints lead. 90 seconds gone in the third quarter. Chan with it. Going to go baseline. Cut off there. Gives it up to Lahif cutting inside. Riley needs to go somewhere with it. Gets it back to Corey Mathis. Now D'Agostino. Foul line extended her first touch in the second half. Into Chan and Chan's fouled. You saw D'Agostino there. She pointed. She told Yanni exactly where to go. Tried to get her the ball and that forces a foul. That's the second on Jane Howe. And that is what happens when you play this long. A veteran player in D'Agostino seeing the play before it happens and then looking to Yanni Chan who cut towards the basket. Chan lays it up and in off the inbound. And Yanni, after being held just one point in the first half, has four of the first seven, four of the first eight for the Saints. And Yanni's a bit of a bruiser. She knows how to bang in the paint. Walsh with it. Walsh goes underneath. Howe kicked it right back out. Howe had a wide open layup. If she turned to look for it. Saints lead by 19. Staplefeld throws up a runner. No good. Chan can't control the rebound. And Jane Howe can't get the rebound. Rebound tipped around again. And Philippon comes away with it. And again, they pull out when there's an open layup there. Mike McDevitt not too happy with that as his team did that twice on that possession. Can't overcomplicate the game. Just get your looks if you're the Monks. Hurley in the lane. The runner won't go. And D'Agostino pulls down the rebound. And for Lauren, she's laboring on that left leg. She is really gutting this one out, but she grabs her fifth rebound. And the Saints are doing a great job altering the shots the Monks are trying to take. Monks trying to take it inside on these dribble drives. No such luck. A carry called on Corey Mathis. <laughs> Andy Ozenov just gave a long look. That's another turnover for the Saints, though. That's 11 on the day. And that's a head scratcher for sure. Philippon, but only their first here in this third quarter. Philippon and Walsh will go out. It's Nina Howe that will come back on with Talon. This lineup on the floor, Hurley, Staplefeld, Jane and Nina Howe both out there along with Talon was the lineup that got down to eight as Staplefeld will take the three off the mark. Jamad Finn grabs another rebound, her fifth. Jamad right up the middle of the floor has Chan with her, oh. feeds it off to her and lays it in for two. Yanni with six points here in the second half, or excuse me, eight points in the second half. And the Saints up by 21, 49, 28, 656 left in the third. My word, that was beautiful offensive basketball. Jamad Finn on the feed to Yanni Chan. That one no good. Stapelfeld gets a rebound, rebound tipped out, and Nina Howe comes away with it. 15 on the shot clock here for Nina. Near side, it's Hurley with 10 on the shot clock. Approaching six and a half minutes, spins in the lane, little runner. That one is going to be a foul on D'Agostino, and that's, again, that's the that's the movement that Lord Lordon doesn't have right now. That's going to put Hurley on the free throw line to shoot two, her first two of the day. And how Nina Howe has had some luck getting in the paint because she knows how to spin and move around a little better than I think some of her teammates. So she's had more success today getting points out of these dribble drives. A miss there from an 80% free throw shooter on the season. Again, it stays at 21. And for some reason, they didn't let Wild in after that first free throw. So we'll see if this one goes through. They'll let her back on. They do. And you got to think this is for D'Agostino. Yeah. It is for Laura Donna. And again, injured her knee late in the half, came back out. 13 points, five rebounds, an assist, and a block for D'Agostino in 20 minutes. Again, if the game closed out right now, she'd be your MVP. Saints up 20. And she's just so tough. Again, showing so much heart, getting back into this game and still impacting it the way she has. Chan can't get it, grabs the rebound, and it's going to be a jump ball that will go back to the Monks. And Yanni Chan <laughs> coming alive here in the second half. See, even when it doesn't turn Saints ball, Yanni Chan getting the crowd on her side. Just a great aggressive player. Vicious play. Has the Saints looking good here. Yanni in the first half, 0 for 4 from the field. Had just one point. 4 of 4 here in the second half. Nine points. Five rebounds, two steals, and a block for Yanni so far. 
as Amari Faust is going to come on as well. So it's Faust, Finn, Chan, Wild, and Lahif for the Saints. And Yanni just has these flashes of brilliance that really make her such an excellent impact player for the Saints. Talon sends her to the deck. Hurley gets in the lane and feeds it underneath to Nina Howe. Howe's going to kick it back out up top. Staplefeld gets an open look at a three. Left another one short, and it's going to be another jump ball. It's Chan along with Hurley who were tied up. And Yanni is just everywhere right now. And Mike McDevitt giving it to the officials now. We think Yanni might have gotten away with a hold there. I don't blame him. Yeah, I mean, I she, mean, she had the arm hooked. But as it's called, I mean, that's something we've said. Yanni Chan, a disruptor, doing exactly what the Saints need to do against a very polished, high-level offense in St. Joseph's College. Chan's going to come out eight points and two rebounds along with a steal so far here in the second half in the four and a half minutes she played there. Finn, deep three in the air, off the mark, rebound down to Lahif on the opposite side. Riley gets in the lane, finds a cutting Matella. Matella, little floater up and in for two. Olivia Matella with nine points, and just like that, it's 51-29. Largest lead of the day for the Saints with 536 left in the third, and they are absolutely stunning the Monks right now. Smooth sailing for Matella, and then a beautiful floater to capitalize on Hurley that. Hurley will take the three and make a big three. Her first three of the game cuts it back to 19 51-32. She has eight on the day. 5-17 left in the third. Finn on the far side in one of those random sunspots we get here at Andy Ozanov <laughs> Court. Not poor a Desiree, spot. Poor Desiree Robinson sitting right in that sun. Going to get a little tan. Finn in the lane. Little runner. That one ripped away. Gets it right back. Lays it up. No good. As Hurley and Finn are really going at it here. Hurley grabs another rebound. As she pulls down her fourth. And Hurley is a do-it-all player. Very skilled on the boards. Jane Howe with it, going to go baseline. Goes up and under and lays it in. Nice little reverse from Jane Howe there. She has nine points to go with four rebounds. 51-34, little 6 nothing run here from the Monks. And Howe really punishing on the baseline, someone who knows how to get in the paint and make the most of things. Excuse me, a 4 nothing run as Finn will step back long. Two in the air, no good. Rebound tipped away. Lahif tipped it right into the hands of Angelica Hurley. Up ahead of the pack to Staplefeld. Staplefeld, little hesitation move, kicks it. Talon, Hurley, straightaway, three in the air. No good, rebound, tipped, and Jamad Finn. No, Amari Faust going to come away with it. That's team rebounding right there. Love to see it on the action. Saints trying to keep this lead comfortable. Saints will slow it down as we approach four minutes left here. Lahif with it, little spin move. That one blocked. Finn tipped it, but away with it comes Talon. And again, it was Hurley. Hurley's really starting to turn it on here. Mm -hmm. Trying to bring her teammates along with her. Nina Howe with it, going to go baseline. Nice feed inside to Talon, who lays it up and in. That's a 6 nothing run now, 51-36. Talon has four. And the clock is ticking for St. Joseph. If you're going to make a run, might as well be now. Got to try to get this thing within striking distance if you're them. It was 22, it's down to 15, and then the Saints turn it over. Eubanks and Chan waiting to come in for the Saints. A staple fell with it now. I think for Andy Ozanov, he's got to get a veteran into that backcourt. Jamad mm -hmm. Finn's playing it's kind of the three right now as Nina Howe gets it. Far side talent. She'll go baseline. Loses her footing and a foul going to be called Darren Riley. Little hip. That's her third. Eubanks and Chan come on. On the other side, it is Anderson and Walsh who will come on. Staplefeld and Jane Howe will come off. Lahif and Finn will come off. So Jamad leaves with 10, 6, and 5. Riley leaves with 4 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists. Fresh 20 here, 320 left on, in, on the clock in the third. Talon will step into a jumper, left it short. Rebound down to Amari Faust. Yeah, good job controlling the rebound by Faust there. And for St. Joseph's main offense has just been few and far between. Saints rushing it here. They turn it over for the third straight possession. Just can't afford that sloppiness. Hurley gives it up. Nina Howe closed out, gets it back to Hurley, who will take a wing three this time. Rattles out as Eubanks pulls down her fifth rebound. You Eubanks talk, just two off her career high. You want to talk about a momentum changer. They get this thing to 12, and it suddenly feels a little bit within reach. 15, man, that's, that's a tough spot to be in, though. Wild going to put this one up and no good. And again, the Saints are just rushing everything right now, trying to play more of an ISO game. Mm -hmm. Well, with 235 left, they still lead 51-36, but they've been held without a score here in close to three minutes. And that gets it to 12 for Anderson. And Andy Ozanov will take the timeout. 228 remaining. Monks making their run in the middle of a 10-0 run. They trail 51-39 on your home for Saints basketball. 
EC TV and the Saints now up to 13 turnovers. The Monks have turned it in to eight points. And again, this was sitting at 22. 10 nothing run over the past four minutes by the Monks. Has it at 12 with 228 remaining. And Alex, this is really, it, it really flipped. Yanni Chan went out and everything kind of grinded to a halt. I don't think the offense was playing all that well before that, but she was the one who was getting in on the offensive glass. She's coming back in now. What do you expect to see from the Saints in this, this pretty pivotal stretch run here? They've controlled the tempo, but if this gets under 10, look out. Well, I think this is the Saints team that's looking to get it more in the paint. And for Chan, I think she's going to start making some winning plays here to get this thing back to a little bit more of a comfortable lead. A Saints team that this has been the story of the game. They've gone up big, and then it's the lead has shrunk down. It's gotten a little bit worrisome. This is where they got to reassert control over Mathis, the GNAC championship. Mathis, Eubanks, Matella, and D'Agostino for the Saints. Philippon, Walsh as that one goes on the floor, and then right back to Corey Mathis. Mathis can take a little short two. No good. Eubanks gets a rebound. She puts it up and in for two. Kira Eubanks. Four points, six rebounds on the day. Two minutes left, and that ends a 10 0 run. That's a big one there for the Saints. And the long arms of Kira Eubanks, a former volleyball player, getting that rebound and then finishing. Just love to see that from her, getting involved in a championship game. Staplefell drops it off. No good from Talon for three. D'Agostino grabs her sixth rebound. Up the near side, it's Matella. Olivia. Crosses over on Anderson, now finds D'Agostino into Eubanks. Nice feed inside, and she gets fouled. going to get to the line. Kira Eubanks asserting herself. This is the best game she's played all season, and it comes in the GNAC championship game. Minute 35 left, she's going to get two free throws. And right when you need it to, operating off of the right block and just squaring up, bodying up for some big plays. She's created offense for the Saints when they've desperately needed it. She gets the first one to go, 54% free throw shooter on the season. Five points, six rebounds, and a block in nine minutes. Someone who came into the night averaging only nine minutes a game. That one no good, and Anderson comes away with the rebound. Rebounds starting to even out a little bit. The Saints were plus 20. They're only a plus 13 at this point. Yeah, this is the Saints team that's so comfortable dominating on the glass, but... Again, reasserting control is going to be important. Philippon goes into the corner, right back to her. Nice feed inside. That was a good give and go, and then a late foul called on Eubanks. So it could be a three-point play for Philippon. And Philippon can do that. I mean, this is a veteran player. Good take to the basket. Trying to get this thing within striking distance once again. Philippon stepping up. First on Kira as off will go Mattel and back on will come Riley Lahiff. Olivia leaves with nine points and a couple rebounds to go with two steals. Philippon, two of two from the free throw line. The Monks, five of six as a team. That one through, and just like that, it's right back to 12. Just when the Saints got a little bit of breathing room. Minute 12 left here in the third. They lead by 12. Into a cutting D'Agostino. Little nice. right-handed hook up and in for two. 15 and six for Loredana D'Agostino. Final minute of the third. Saints lead 56-42. And there, D'Agostino cutting to the left block and then floating it up and in. Such an excellent big. As Chan called for the foul, Philippon's going to get to the line again as Saints are over the limit with that one. And for Yanni, that's her second. So Philippon, who just had a three-point play, going to look to get two more. And this is what you want if you're the Monks. Start to pile up these free throws where they're shooting 86% as a team. As first one's through, again, a 74.4% free throw shooting team. Philippon's one of the better ones. She has eight very quietly. Exactly, and slow down the game a little bit. Don't allow the Saints to get quick baskets. I put the hex on her there. You see what I did? <laughs> yeah, the announcer curse working its magic. Chan gets it on the far side wing. Lobbed in Eubanks again. Bucket and the foul! Kira Eubanks got the feed from Yanni Chan, and Eubanks is asserting herself in the second half. What have we said about the fronting play there, Alex? They're fronting the bigs, and the Saints are making a living off of it in this game. Make it count, Kira Eubanks. Excellent and one play. They've been playing physical with her, and she's been outbodying them. Now 58-43 Saints. That one no good rebound tipped around. Eubanks can't get there, and she's going to get called for the foul. That's a big one, though, because look who it is. It's Philippon. Philippon started mm -hmm. to make these plays. The senior seeing this one wind down a little bit. She's going to get two free throws. Second on Kira. 
second in the last <laughs> 20 seconds of gameplay. So Philippon will get two more. The Monks, seven of nine from the free throw line on the seat on the game, excuse me. Philippon four of five. As Corey Mathis is going to come off. Surprised they're taking a good three point shooter off with 42.7 left. Yeah. Eubanks thought that she was the one coming out. That one up and through for Kira. 10 minutes, 7.6 rebounds, and a block. And she took a shot to the chin on that play, too. So having to work her way through that, showcase a little toughness here. Philippon hits them both. It sits at 13 with 41 seconds. Saints with a two-for-one opportunity here again. They're going slow with these two-for-ones. I think they're just trying to wind down that clock. Mm. Final 30 seconds of the quarter now. D'Agostino gives the up fake. Now Chan comes free. Chan, elbow jumper, fading away, no good. D'Agostino gets a rebound, goes back up, bucket and the foul. The interior play of the Saints is just taking over. D'Agostino with 17 and eight. Saints bodying up in the paint, Matt. That is lovely. And another chance for an and one. D'Agostino so good to see her stepping up. And she, making some baskets in this third quarter. One of two from the line on the day. The Saints as a team are four of eight from the line. That one no good. Final 19 seconds here. Saints leading 60 to 45. Andy Oznov giving his team the defensive signals. They're going man-to-man -man on this possession. Philippon will take the three and hit Ooh. it. Big three there from Philippon, but the Saints with a chance to get this final bucket. Got to push. Up ahead to Chan with two. With one, going to take it ahead of the buzzer. Off the mark. So once again, St. Joe's closes out the quarter with the bucket. After three, Saints leading by 12, 60 to 48. One quarter left to decide a GNAC champion here on ECTV. Alex, it's been the interior presence for the Saints that has really done such a good job tonight. 36-16 is the advantage on points in the paint. Mm -hmm. 24 of those have come from Eubanks and D'Agostino. Laura Donna D'Agostino leading the way. 17 points on 8 of 12 shooting. 8 rebounds and a block. Kira Eubanks, 7 rebounds, 7 points, 6 rebounds, and a block. Jamad Finn, the only other player who, the only other Saints player other than D'Agostino in double figures with 10, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists. On the other side, 13 points from Grace Philippon, including 9, or excuse me, 11 in that third quarter. Then you have Jane Howe with nine, Hurley and Staplefeld both with eight. Saints are shooting 49%, Monks 34%. The difference, again, has been the three-point shooting. No surprise there for the Monks, seven of 21 on the day. They'll come out with Talon, Hurley, Jane Howe, Nina Howe, and Staplefeld. They're going to work right to left in the Blues. Again, starting this fourth quarter, down 12. It'll be Chan, Eubanks, Lahif, D'Agostino, and Finn for the Saints. So Andy Ozanov riding this lineup that got him back, got that lead back up at the end of the fourth quarter. You got some veterans on your squad here, but you also got Eubanks, who really adds physicality and size besides D'Agostino on the weak side. Underway here in the fourth quarter. Saints 10 minutes away from a three-peat. St. Joe's not going away quietly, though. They trail by as many as 22 in that third quarter. And they cut it to 12. Staplefeld up top. Hurley will tee up the three. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Uh oh It's in single digits at nine. Again, this was 22 early in that third quarter. And that merits a good old pull of the collar. Things getting a little too close for comfort. And Finn oh! will go right to the hoop, cutting across the lane, lays it up and in. And she just worked around the charge circle so well and then just niftily finished it. 62-51. Double, excuse me, a dozen for Finn, and then a hand check called on Kira Eubanks. They've been calling that one all game. No surprise there. That's the third on Kira. First on the Saints here on the fourth. Hurley will inbound on the near side left. Now it's Nina Howe that will inbound. Now it'll be Staplefeld that will inbound, and the Saints are going to get Mathis in ahead of that. It's going to be Kira Eubanks that comes off. So the Saints will have their starting five on the floor here with 9.15 left. Eubanks again leaving with seven and six. Again, just a really solid emerging big for Emmanuel. Excited to see what she brings to the table. Nina Howe with it. Gives it up. Hurley will take three, same spot. Off the mark this time as Mathis comes with it. Three on two on the break. Now Chan. Oh, Chan's going to get in the lane, lay it up, and she gets fouled hard. Ooh. She'll get to the free throw line, and that's going to be three on Jane Howe with 9.02 left. 
And Yanni going to get two free throws. And Howe had to overcompensate there because Chan had a wide open lane for a moment there. It's a good recovery. Absolutely a good recovery. I mean, you try to make her earn those points at the line. And for Chan, someone who already has nine, try to get her to double figures here. 73% free throw shooter, one to two on the night. Gets that one to go. Back at a dozen, she's the third Saints player in double figures with 10. Remember, she just had one point at the half. Went on that 4-4 run to start the third quarter. You know, I mean, it's been a brilliant second half outside of that free throw miss there. 5 of 11 for the Saints from the free throw uh, line tonight. This game would feel just a little different if those had fallen. D'Agostino knocks it away. Lahif going to get her first steal of the game. They tried to find Talon. Now the Saints come back the other way. Up a dozen with 8.45 left. Finn comes free. Going to take a quick three in rhythm. Way off the mark. Mm. It was the right idea. She came off the pick, had the open look. And that's going to get Olivia Mattel into the game. And, and again, a top-notch shooter right there, though, kind of going for the kill shot at a time where you work Ooh, your she, offense in a little bit. It's a good shot, just unfortunately fell off bad. She goes right to the athletic training table, and now the Saints double team on the press as Chan loses her footing, and now it's three on two back the other way. Staple fell in the lane, won't get the bucket, but Lahif going to pick up her fourth. That's four on Riley. And with Finn getting checked out by the athletic training staff, looking at her left hand, they're going to go to Allison Wild on the substitution here. And for such a skilled scorer, the lefty senior Staplefield saw a lane, and she tried to make the most of it, now going to the free throw line. Cassandra Staplefeld, 18 points a game in the regular season, 82% free throw shooter. Gets the first one to go, and this is one of those players that I mean, every time you look down at the scoreboard for the Monks, Staplefeld's leading the way. Just such an such a adept scorer, and timeout's going to be taken here by the Monks as it sits at 10 with 8.26 remaining as Staplefeld in double figures with 10. 8.26 left in regulation. Saints leading 63-53 on your home for Saints basketball. ECTV and Alex. The Monks just won't go away. Not that we thought they would, but... This was 22 with seven minutes left in the third quarter. Since then, it has really been mostly Monks outside of D'Agostino and Eubanks. What can the Saints do to get some of their guards involved in the offense? Right, and it's a good question. I think for the Saints, try to free up open looks. Maybe you can play a bit of an inside-out game. We're seeing how the Monks have overcompensated when the Saints body up in the paint, so there's going to be looks there. Matella the outside. Matella Mathis. Mathis, Chan, Wild, and D'Agostino for the Saints. Jane Howe, Nina Howe, Staplefeld, Talon, and Hurley for the Monks. This lineup has been the offensive lineup for the Monks today. Little surprisingly, this has been a lineup that's been the most consistent. Well, Philippon leads away. This has been your most consistent lineup. Mm. Mathis calling out the offense. Going to take it herself to the left hand. Right into the lane against Staplefeld. Nice. She lays it in with the left hand. Corey Mathis. Getting in deep. She has four. Two minutes gone in the fourth. Saints back up to a 12-point lead, 65-53. And what happened on that play, D'Agostino cleared a lane for her teammate, allowing a great, smooth transition to the basket. Now Staplefeld in the lane. Wild doing good job getting vertical and affecting that shot. Saints with the ball on a 12-point lead. D'Agostino running the floor. Gives it up to Chan. Yaney will give it up to the near side. Now Matella. Motella working with the right hand. Goes into Wild. Nice feed. Bucket. No good, but the foul going to be there. Beautiful feed from Olivia Motella to that outside left hand mm -hmm. of Allison Wild, who will get to the free throw line. That foul goes on Jane Howe, her third. And the Saints are just working through whoever is the right post defender. Saints are just working right through them. And Wild, someone we haven't talked about much, had the buzzer beater in the last matchup. And right there, just making the use of their post defense. Gets that one, just a 47% free throw shooter, but gets that to go and it's back up to 13. Three points, two rebounds on the day in 15 minutes. Really is putting a good effort defensively, though. Mm -hmm. Gets them both to go. Back up to 14, 67-53, 7.35 left. And Andy Ozanov imploring his bench to get a little active. Hurley clears some space on Matella. Gets back in the lane. Kicks it out, long two from Howe. Good. Yep, that's her shot. Again, long two. She can make those. 11 for Howe, tied for a team high. Three Monks players in double figures. 7-17 left, 67-55. Mathis gets back in the lane, kicks it. Wild, Matella. Now Mathis 
Up fake, she traveled with it. Ah. Thinking about that next step before she took that dribble, that is the 14th turnover for the Saints. And for the Monks, after having nine turnovers in the first quarter, they've had just six ever since, as Matella will go out and Finn will come back on. Nina Howe and Talon will go out, Philippon and Walsh are going to come back on, so the starting five on the floor for the Monks. Stapleville with it, going to push it up the near side left. Cut off there by Chan, little stutter step, gets in lane, and that's a foul on Ooh. Annie. Got her with the body, and Stapleville going to head back to the free throw line, and the Monks wisely just trying to get to the free throw line. Again, yeah. it's what they do best. They shoot threes and they hit free throws, along with the best of them in the country, and they've been getting to the free throw line. These are going to be free throws 14 and 15. They're 11 to 13 so far. The Saints, on the other end, 7 of 13. Saints got to knock down those free throws. And again, this is where it's really two sides of a coin with the Saints' physicality. Offensively, it's worked brilliantly. Defensively, it's led to a lot of free throws as of late. Staplefeld, despite being 3 of 14 from the field, has 11 points to go with four rebounds and a couple assists. She always finds a way to get hers. Really a pure scorer. That one won't go as D'Agostino pulls down another rebound on the season. Staplefeld shooting 42% from the field. Shooting just three of 14 today. Jeez. D'Agostino now with 17 and nine. Chan with it, 15 on the shot clock, 6.45 left in regulation. Little stutter step handoff to D'Agostino, gets to the foul line, little jumper in rhythm, hit another nice. one, 19 and nine for D'Agostino. 69-56 the lead, six and a half left. And D'Agostino came around and took a tough Free throw line jumper and knocked it down. D'Agostino's just been cash money today. Jane Howe with it, no good. Rebound down to Yanni Chan. Chan with seven rebounds to go with those ten points. Mathis will walk it over. We can go under six minutes on this possession. Saints leading by 13. You can see assistant coach Megan kerwin Closey getting up and imploring her team to run the offense through. Ten on the shot clock here. Hand off to Chan, who will take the three off the mark. Not her shot. Staple fell away with the rebound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she still has to be a little bit more polished on that jump shot. She's still working her way through as a perimeter player. Chan takes just one three a game on the season. Near side, Philippon closed out by Chan. Trying to get inside. Chan knocked away in a late whistle. Oh, oh, oh. come on. Come on. Chan called for her third. That's going to be the third on the team with 5.39 left. And each goes off court. Grows restless at these officials. As off will go Hurley. And on will come Nina Howe. Hurley has put in 29 minutes already. Has 11 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists. Nina Howe gets it into Jane Howe. Up top to Philippon. Near side, Staplefeld. Thought about 3. We'll pull it down. 15 on the shot clock. Walsh with it. Walsh, spin move. Kicks it. Staplefeld wide open. Three in the air. No good. Rebound to Jane Howe, and she lays it in. Mm -mm. Can't fall asleep on a possession like that. You want to try to keep this thing comfortable halfway through the fourth quarter. Down to 13. Jane Howe now with 13 and 5. Hand off to Finn. Jamad going to get right into the lane. She is tripped. Foul going to go, I believe, on Jane Howe. That'll be her fourth. Third on the team, and that's a big one there because Jane Howe has really been the entirety of the inside presence for the Monks. And it's a huge problem, too, because the Saints have really gotten whatever look they've wanted in the paint. It hasn't mattered. They've had players go around the left side, score that way, play off the right block. Whatever they need to do, they've gotten it. Wild with it. Step back long, two. No good. Rebound on the floor. Bunch of players on the floor as D'Agostino somehow got tied up, and now it's two on one back the other way. Quickly up ahead to Walsh, who's going to get fouled. And they're going to make her earn it. Finn just going to grab her, and Wild was there as well. You had Chan D'Agostino on the floor for the Saints. I believe it was. It looked like it was Talon who was tangled up for the Monks. As Wild going to come off and back on will come Riley Lahiff. But this can get back into single digits here as Walsh will have two free throws. Right, and we can't front about that. You see all the bodies on the floor. This is a heated physical rivalry. And that's what you see, bodies on the floor with everything on the line. It sits at 10. Again, this was as much as 22 at one point. The Monks have really fought back hard. Walsh can make it nine with this free throw. She does just that. It sits at nine. The Monks now 14 of 17 from the free throw line on the day. First two for Walsh. Under five minutes left. Saints leading 69-60. 
Lahif comes free. Lahif has that one knocked away momentarily. Uh, Another turnover for the Saints. The Saints now have 15 turnovers. That's even with the Monks. And, and the Monks Lahif, can get to seven. And Lahif showed the ball high and it got deflected out. Just a frustrating turnover with a lot on the line. Staplefeld going to look at a three off the mark. Ooh. Rebound down to Chan. And again, you just don't expect this type of day. Three of 16 out of Staplefeld. Mm -mm. The second best three-point shooter in the GNAC is just two of 10 from beyond the arc. And it's four minutes to glory, Matt. Let's see if the Saints can close this thing out and continue to shut down Staplefeld. Chan, 18-footer off the mark. Rebound inside goes to Walsh as D'Agostino was in there, but now back on the Monks the other way. Talon with it. Talon working on Chan. Went to the floor. Come on. It's either got to be a foul or a travel, but eventually ends up in the hands of the Saints. Staplefeld with someone in there. No quit out of Staplefeld. Nandy mm -hmm. Ozanov going to take a full timeout. As we have 3.56 left in regulation, this one coming right down to the wire. The Monks have made a big second-half charge, but they trail 69-60 on their home for Saints basketball, ECTV. And the Saints were just nine points so far here in this fourth quarter. They're down to 48% shooting. Again, the big difference in this one has been threes and free throws. No surprise when you're playing the Monks. Monks mm -hmm. eight of 25 from three, Saints just two of 10. Monks 14 of 17 from the free throw line. Saints just 7 of 13. Turnovers are even. After one quarter, the Monks had nine. The Saints had just three. You would have never thought that that would happen. They would even out. But the Monks have done a terrific job at limiting their turnovers. For the Saints, points in the paint is where they have lived today. 40 to 18, the advantage. 20 to 10, the bench, point, bench points advantage. And 13-5, the advantage in second chance points. And it's just so great to see Emmanuel being able to score efficiently, but now with four minutes left, can your defense clamp up and shut down one of the top offenses in the nation? It's going to be fun to see here. And you've got this many three-point shooters. You know St. Joe's still has one more run in them. Nina Howe, Talon, Curley back on the floor, Philippon and Walsh for the Monks. Finn, Chan, Mathis, D'Agostino, and Lahit for the Saints. Starting five out there for Andy Ozanov. Saints get a double pick there. Inside it goes to Lahif. Riley kicks it. Mathis three in the air. Got it! Corey Mathis with her first three of the game. Gets it back to 12. She has seven. And Corey Mathis trying to bring it home. The GNAC three-peat Saints staring down the barrel of it. Hurley can't get going. Finn grabs another rebound. Corey came in averaging just two points a game. Jamad grabs her seventh rebound. 12, seven, and five for Jamad Finn. We can go right down around three minutes on this possession. And how about Corey Mathis on that shot? I've been waiting to see her knock down something like that for a long time, and she does it there. Back to Mathis, inside to Jamad Finn. Triple team comes. She's going to dribble out of it. D'Agostino, 18-footer, no good. A rebound on the floor, and it comes away to Hurley, her seventh. Up ahead it goes. Nina Howe with it. Has Phillip on with her. It gets left alone. Little 10-footer, up and in for two. Nina, her first bucket of the game, gets it back to 10 with 2.53 left. So under three minutes left here. And how does a great job playing off these defenders. She sees everybody's flying at her, trying to catch up. She slows it down, dribbles into a nice little short jumper. Finn, step back, three behind a pick, no good. Rebound to Lahif, out of bounds off of Riley. Not the possession Andy Ozanov wanted. The quick possession that led to a missed bucket is Nina Howe will come off, as will Philippon. Staplefeld will come back on along with Jane Howe. 72 62, 235 left in regulation. Far side early. Now it's Walsh. Walsh has been quiet. Going to skip to the near side. Jane Howe up fake, gets in the lane, finds Talon who lays this one up and in for two. Mm -hmm. It's down to eight. This is as close as it's been since midway through the second quarter, right before the Saints made a 7 0 run. And that was really a must score possession. You got a big deficit, got a rally, and this team knows how to execute in the Monks. And then Lahif turns it over. That is turnover number 16 for the Saints. The Monks can get to six. That would be as close as it was since the opening minutes. Oh, it's no. It's down to five instead, 72-67, as Staplefeld hits the three. So clutch on that shot with the season on the line. It's a two-possession game out of nowhere. This is as close as it's been since eight to four. Woo. This was 22 early in the third quarter. And it's as big as it gets, Matt. 
95 seconds left here for the Saints. Hand off to Finn. Goes behind a pick. Jamad loses a dribble. Gives it up to Chan. Chan with three. Chan going to have to take the three off the mark. Rebound to Jamad Finn. She'll lay it up and in for two. Big bucket for Jamad. She has 14, 74, 67, 80 seconds left. Jamad Finn heads up play, and that possibly a clinching shot. 14 and eight for Jamad. Step back, three in the air off the mark. Lahif pulls down the rebound. Big possession there. Saints will take it under a minute. McDevitt trying to get his team to come up with pressure. We hit the one minute mark left. Saints leading by seven. And a foul mm -hmm. called there. McDevitt wanted that one when the Saints were still in the backcourt. You can see he's trying to tell his team they still have one foul to give, but he wanted that one much earlier. Andy Osanov going to wisely take this timeout. 59.1 seconds remaining. The Monks have it at 74-67. The Saints trying to hold on for dear life. With under a minute left here in the GNAC Championship game on ECTV, and it's going to be a full timeout as Andy Ozanov did not have that 30-second timeout left. We reset. 59.1 seconds remaining. Saints leading 74-67. Possession arrow is with Emmanuel College. Both teams in the bonus. Saints with one timeout left. Bunks with two. Alex, final 59 seconds. Saints just got to kind of hold on here as they have 20 on the shot clock. They can take us down to 39 seconds if they use all of it. What do you expect from the Monks here? Well, I think for the Monks, you got to look for a three-point shot. You just don't have enough time unless you can get a quick look. Whatever you do, you got to generate a quick, easy look if you can. Do and you let's foul if you're McDevitt? Do you foul? It's a good question. I think that you might if you have to. Again, you have to limit the looks and get the ball back as soon as you can, so that may be a good idea. And, and Matt, look, going into this game, the Saints told me, especially Corey Mathis, that St. Joseph's has nothing to lose and the Saints have everything to maintain here. And with that in mind, under, dura under duress, under pressure, the Saints have been poised, knocking down some key shots. Corey Mathis and Jamad Finn with some big buckets down the stretch. 59.1 seconds left. Saints come out with their starting five. Finn, Mathis, Chan, Liff and D'Agostino on the other side. Hurley, Stapelfeld, Talon, Walsh, and Hurley. Mathis into the backcourt, and Staplefeld does foul, and they'll send Corey Mathis to the free throw line. Corey, 78% free throw shooter on the season. All eyes on Corey Mathis here, but she's no stranger to this. Again, she had to go into St. Joseph's Main and knock down some big free throws. Anderson, the three-point shooter, is the one who comes on here. Mathis, mm -hmm. no matter what, this will be, this can stay at three possessions. First one up and through. The most it can be is nine. It sits at eight, 75, 67. So you look, it's Staplefeld, it's Anderson, and it's Hurley, the three-point shooters on the floor right now for the Monks. Mathis rattles home the second one. Corey in double figures. Or no, excuse me, she's at nine. Corey 55 been, seconds left. She's been phenomenal, Matt. Backdoor cut here. It's Jane Howe lays this one up and in for two. So a quick two and a timeout taken. By the Monks, 48 seconds on the nose remaining. Timeout taken by the Monks, 76-69. The Saints lead here on your home for Saints basketball, ECTV. And I'll tell you, the g -Net getting their money's worth here today. Oh, this absolutely. one looked like it was going to be a runaway for the Saints, but Mike McDevitt rallied his team, and they have cut it down. But the Saints looking to close it out. And a lot of the g -Net tournament games haven't been particularly close. They have been exactly barn burners, but... Like you said, these students, these fans, these parents, everybody coming in today is getting their money's worth. And what a fun game we have. And props to the Monks. I said earlier, take a three if you get one, but if you can get a quick look like they did off the baseline, quick cut to the basket and score, then you're still in this game and you can keep this game going. Ooh, the Saints fans with 48 seconds left chanting goodbye. 76-69 yeah. is the score. A little early for that for me, yeah. but... Uh, 48 seconds left here. Saints looking to three-peat. It would be the first time they've had three consecutive titles since they ended a seven-peat in 2013, the last time they went from 07 to 13, winning every GNAC title. They're looking to make it a three-peat here. And again, Matt, just like I mentioned in the Norwich game, the question lingers. What kind of history will you make today? Finn to inbound. And a foul going to be called there on Staplefeld. So that's going to be two shots in... The rule's not the same as in the NBA, so it's not going to be two shots and possession, but it's going to be two shots for Corey Mathis. 
it should be that rule. Let's yeah. be honest. To be able to foul and not take any time off the clock, it should be two shots in possession. That looks like Jane Howe has fouled out. And that's a big... Or no, excuse me. They called that one on Staplefeld. So Staplefeld has fouled out. Oh, that's costly. So you just lose the second leading three-point shooter in the GNAC. And one of your top scorers in program history, just a, a phenomenal player, right? If this, if this is her last game, if the Saints hold on for this, a player that, you know, when you're talking about Saints amongst 10 years from now, she's going to be one of the players that's mentioned. Just a, a tremendous player, has fouled out there with 14 points. And she's gone to the war for the Monks so many times, deserves credit for that. Mathis gets the first one. Again, the best it can be is nine. Corey Mathis with 10 points, first time in double figures all season. And it comes in the GNAC title game. Again, Andy always keeps his players prepared for moments like this, and Corey Mathis has stepped up. Misses that one, so it's 77-69. 44 seconds left here. Anderson from way outside, oh. well off the mark. Wide open, she could take two steps in. <laughs> McDevitt yeah. pointed at it, too. She could have taken two dribbles and taken a much easier three. Anderson, a very good three-point shooter, 12th in the GNAC. Left that one well short, and that's a big one there for the Saints. 37.5 left. You got to assume the Monks are still going to foul until it gets over 10. Yeah, that one's costly. Could have had a much easier look from three. Now the Saints can try and to shoot this down. No. It's stolen, and Hurley gets tripped up by Finn and is going to get to the line, and that one's a tough one there. Lahif was cutting back to the ball. Finn saw her, but Jamad threw it off of Hurley's hands, and now Hurley will get two. And then she can get this thing down to five, a two-possession game. Man, this one just keeps on going on, and St. Joe's hanging in. Can get to six. Two free throws here. Saints ah, up yes. Eight. First one up and through. 35 seconds left. 77-70 is the Saints' lead. A packed house here at Andy Ozanov Court. Ready to kind of ready to let this one go. They were feeling good up 22. And that one missed. D'Agostino tips it oh, around, no. but it somehow ends up with the Monks. Hurley will take the three off the mark. Rebound tipped. It's on the floor. Talon has it ripped away by Corey Mathis. Shot clock is off. Mathis can dribble it out. And a foul there. Corey Mathis got the rebound, and now the gym comes to their feet with 23.5 seconds remaining. And Corey Mathis, someone everyone can root for in this gym, has delivered in this second half. Big free throws, hit a big three-pointer. She has been everything you could ask for. You know who tipped that one? Loredana D'Agostino tipped that one away. It was on the floor at Talon's feet, and D'Agostino knocked that one away. Mathis will have two here. First one, no good. And talk it's just 10 of 18 from the free throw line. Goodness. And, and you know, talk about Lauren D'Agostino, of course, just a warrior today, has fought through a tough injury to continue to impact this game any way she can. Mathis gets it to go. 23.5 seconds left. The Monks take their final timeout. It's 78 70 here on your home for Saints basketball, ECTV. And again, Saints looking for a three peat here in the GNAC. With 23.5 seconds remaining, up eight. Looking pretty good so far. We reset again, 23.5 remaining. Saints lead 78-70. Both teams in the bonus. Monks had timeout, Saints with one possession arrow. Will be with the Saints. Monks, again, out of timeouts after this one and need a couple quick buckets if they want to try to pull this one off. This was 22 with eight minutes left in the third. The Monks got it all the way down to five here in the fourth quarter, but it looks like the Saints are going to be able to hold on for dear life. And it looks like, if you look in front of us, the student section here looks like they might storm the court when the wind happens. Yeah, I mean, I know they're so excited to get this party underway for the Saints. One stop to really sew this thing up. But if anyone can draw up a great play for a quick basket, it's Mike McDevitt. So the Saints Absolutely. not totally in the clear yet, but you can smell it. Chan, D'Agostino, Finn, Lahif, and Mathis for the Saints. Hurley, Anderson, Jane Howe, Talon, and Philippon for the Monks again. Cassandra Staplefeld fouled out with one minute remaining, 59.1 remaining. Andy Ozanov gets the crowd going here as Hurley will inbound. Gets it into Anderson. Right back to Hurley, who will tee up a quick three. Off the mark, Finn gets the rebound, and the Monks are going to fall back. They will not foul. As the Saints get it over half court, final 10 seconds. After a six-year layoff with no championships, the Saints are going to three-peat this senior class, cements their spot in history. 
The dynasty is back on three in a row for the Saints as they win the GNAC title 78-70 here on ECTV. It's sweet victory and it's history made for the Saints undefeated against GNAC foes this season. Just wonderful. Andy Yosinov throws the ball into the crowd. A team record 21 game winning streak. Just the second team in team history to win 25 games. They do it behind the play of their upperclassmen. Laura Donna D'Agostino, your player of the game, 19 and nine. Jamad Finn not far behind, 20, 14 points, nine rebounds, five assists for Jamad. And for the Saints, the GNAC title stays home. They win their third straight GNAC championship. Alex and I are gonna send you down to the floor for the presentation of the GNAC trophy and the all GNAC team. But again, it's a three-peat and the 18th overall title in the GNAC for Andy Yosinov. History is made again for the Saints. Want to thank you for tuning in all season. This is likely the last time you hear from Alex and I. It ends in a GNAC title and a 21-game winning streak. We'll send you down to the floor now as the Saints are GNAC champions for the third time in a row. Thank you. 